Now let's take a look at how we can go from something like this fairly robust breadboard with nice cleaned up wires to something even more robust, something that we can implement, say, in a robot that's moving around or on your bicycle or in a car or an industrial application or something. Or just the fact that you want to pass it around and let people play with this prototype, right? These wires can get loose eventually. They corrode. They make misconnections. It's just not the best long-term solution. So what we use is perf board. And perf board is perforated board that you cut to whatever size you want and you hardwire solder all those connections in place. There's lots of different kind. This one is like a single point perf board. Some of them have rows that are all connected similar to like a breadboard and how that's connected. I like these, they're one-sided and they have individual copper pads on each hole. And I'll show you briefly how I would use it. This video is more about some tips and techniques more than actually building something on a perf board. It's fairly straightforward, but I've got some things that should help you build it. Number one, size. Don't necessarily want this size of a perf board. I want something smaller. Maybe I'm creating a little board that breaks out all the analog pins here of my Arduino. It'd be just so much easier to have a perf board that could plug into there or have breakout header pins or something. So cutting it, cutting it, you can use little nippers, you can use some scissors, don't bother. I see lots of people doing that. You get jagged edges, it's not the best way. Best thing you can do, go get some really cheap tin snips. Make sure you buy whether you buy a right-handed or left-handed version. But look at this, if I were to take this perf board, or actually I have one here cut down already, I were to just cut a row off of this. I mean, it cuts so easily, leaves a nice clean edge, very little sharp corners. I mean, it's just, it's really nice. And if I wanted, say, a little breakout board from our Arduino, I can actually just cut the board like that. And look at that. I've got this great little breakout board that I could solder some header pins in and put it on my Arduino. Couldn't really be easier. So that's number one, cutting. Number two, soldering. So if you're going to put a integrated circuit into your board. You can solder it right to the perf board, but trust me on this, and I've done it. Sadly, I've done it. I still actually remember one time I was making an Arduino many, many years ago, I wanna say like close to 10 years ago, and I soldered my 18 mega, I don't remember, I think it was a 168 uh, microcontroller in there, and I fried it. And once I soldered it in, I go to unsolder it, it was a mess, it was horrible. Don't put your microcontrollers or integrated circuits, don't solder them directly to a board. Use something like a socket. And this is a socket. And what this allows you to do is put it into a perf board, solder this in from the backside, and then I can take my microcontroller and I can snap it into the socket. Something happens, I can pop it out. If I change my code, I can actually have on the side a couple different microcontrollers with different codes. It's really great for demoing. It's great for having a backup. So that's one thing. Another thing to know is when soldering to the perf board, and I'll grab my soldering iron real quick to show you. And you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a quick note about this soldering iron. This is my um, used industrial grade Metcal soldering iron. Why do I use this? Um, this uses these RF tips. It's basically like a radio antenna, believe it or not, that, it, that from my understanding excites the tip of the soldering iron and heats it up extremely fast. I love this soldering iron. They're hundreds of dollars new, but you can go to eBay and buy them used for, I think I paid under a hundred bucks for this. And what I like about it is if I go to turn it on, I've just turned my soldering iron on and got these little brass there. Let's see. There you go. It's already up to temperature. I mean, what was that? A couple seconds. Love it. It actually cools down just as fast. But what I wanted to show you is, let's say we were going to solder this header pin in here. I would push it through from this side. And I can get in here and get a nice little blob of solder on my soldering iron. I can tack it in place real quick. And now that's tacked in place, right? But this is what, this is what I wanted to get at. When working with perf board, these are incredibly valuable. This is a rosin flux pen. And what this does is it, it cleans and is a facilitator for the solder to flow. So if I'm going to go in here, you can see the perf boards typically are a little, I don't wanna say messy, but they're not exactly the cleanest of all things. And with a little flux pen, it makes soldering so much easier. Trust me on this one, you want a pen like this. This is a 
rosin flux pen by MG Chemicals. These are really handy to have. They're also really good when you're reworking solder joints. Paint over it with some of the flux and you will desolder much easier. So there's another tip there. I got my header pins in here. Last but not least, I want to also mention that if you are going to solder a bunch of things together, like let's say you needed a whole bunch of pins connected along a bar. I've mentioned earlier in videos, I save these little clips from my LEDs and I'll usually have a few on hand. These can be very handy when soldering on a perf board. Again, I can flux this and say I wanted to connect all these pins together. I can quickly take my little lead that I have here. Can temporarily put it right there. And then I can bend it like that. And I can actually go in and connect all these points. Sometimes you just need a lot of points connected together. See how quickly I can flood that? Look at that. Beautiful bar of solder. So, you know, imagine I had all different breakout wires that I want to connect on the other side. That's a really simple way of doing it. Wires are connected the same way. You know, I like to use these little flush cutters. I just put the wire in on the front. There's my wire in the back, and I can easily just go in there and solder it right where it needs to be. Done. A little bit of a cold solder joint, but don't worry about it. Another very useful thing is make sure you trim these leads down. Get them real nice and short and close to the board. So that's basically how you build on a perf board. Now there's all different kinds. Some of them have built-in rows. Some of them look just like breadboards. And that's the last thing I want to show you. I'm a big fan of these. These are called the PERMA proto boards. And what I like about these is if you look very carefully, each one of these holes is connected already, just like it would be on a breadboard. And if you're building this circuit, I can buy a PERMA proto board. That's a half size breadboard. This is, happens to be a quarter size that I have here, but I can literally just hold this right here and build the same circuit, wire it up the same way as my breadboard, flip it over, solder it together, and it works perfectly. These are extremely handy. They're quite affordable. And to be quite honest with you, if you're building a prototype, they're really slick looking. So that's about it for building on a perf board. I hope those tips and tricks help you a little bit and ease that learning curve. 